Good, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us at our first Greenacre Academy Year 6 Transition Evening. I'm Mrs Campbell, I'm Deputy Head Teacher here at Greenacre Academy um, and I'm also Head of Pastoral Care. Um, this evening you are going to see Mrs Bridger, the Head Teacher, who's going to run through some of the key information that you are probably um, wanting to know about for your son starting with us in September. And you're also going to hear from Miss Murphy, our Head of Year 7, who is going to answer some questions that have been emailed to the Transition um, Greenacre Academy email address and also questions that you are going to pose to us this evening. Um, there's going to be a couple of housekeeping things I'm going to go through with you before um, I hand over to Mrs Bridger. Um, if you move your mouse gently on your screen, you will notice a grey toolbar come up um, on your screen. On that toolbar, you will see a box with a question mark in it, a little blue box with a question mark in it. If you click on that, on that, you have the ability to write down any questions that you may have for us this evening. And Miss Murphy is going to make a note of those and we're going to come back to you towards the end of this evening. And um, the other thing that I'm going to um, let you know is that this is going to last about 30 minutes. Um, so at the end of 30 minutes, we will sign off. And at that point, the transition evening has ended. It is so lovely to see so many people um, logged in this evening. We actually have 182 students starting with us in September and over 150 parents have signed in this evening to watch this. So please bear with us. This is our first um, virtual transition evening and we would have loved to have had you all at the school here. Um, and in the hall to talk to you. And I know Mrs Bridges is going to talk about that in a second. Unfortunately, we couldn't. So hopefully this is the next best thing. But do please bear with us. Um, we're learning technology as we go. Um, it's been a sharp learning curve. Hopefully this will go smoothly. So that said, I'm going to pass over now to Mrs Bridger and I will see you in about 10 minutes or so. Hello there. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm Mrs Bridger. I'm the head teacher here um, and I. it's odd talking to you when I can't see any of you, uh, but I do know many, many of you are, are there online with us. Um, so the first thing to say really is, uh, in my view, you have entrusted us with the most important job, um, and that is the education and welfare of your child, who will start with us as a child and leave us as a young man. Um, so exciting times ahead. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the staff for fixing this up. Um, as Mrs Campbell said, we've had to get really good with technology really quickly and um, through this uh, awful situation that we're all faced with right now um, it's something that we're becoming more and more used to is sitting in front of a laptop and uh, talking in this way um, so thanks to, to all of the staff that have fixed this up and thank you for joining us um, so you would have received information now, um, you would have received a transition pack uh, and that will contain information on uniform um, and the homeschool agreement. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, as we move on. So just to remind you, um, Greenacre Academy is part of a trust. We're part of the Skills for Life Trust and there is us and uh, four other schools, so five schools in total. Uh, two secondaries, Greenacre and Waterslay Girls, um, and then three primary schools. And uh, in terms of being in a trust, that brings real advantages because certainly between us and the girls' school, we work together collaboratively. So training can be done together, new initiatives that come out, we, we discover together and work through. Equally, when exam boards change specifications, it's something that we can have expertise on both sites. As well as, of course, um, both schools have very large gyms. Waterslade girls have just had one built. Um, our sports hall, uh, as you may have seen when you come in, is very large. Um, and we've both got extensive grounds, which um, students from both sites can um, you know, utilise those. So being part of a trust is um, really important for us and also really benefits us in terms of we know what uh, the curriculum uh, happens at primary school. So we know what the year five and six curriculum is um, and we're able to continue that learning journey on into secondary school. And I think that gives us a real advantage. Um, certainly our staff have been into primary schools. We've looked at what the year sixes can achieve. We've looked at uh, what type of work they're doing. Um, and I think what used to happen in the past is sometimes uh, year sevens went backwards. Um, actually, ours will just continue going forwards. Um, so 
being part of the Skills for Life Trust means we have an ethos, we have a, a vision. And our vision is all centred around something called Employ Me. Um, now, the vision within the trust is to make our young people be uh, the most employable that they can be uh, up against probably very stiff competition in the future. We want them equipped with soft skills um, as well as academic skills. Um, so this is Employ Me, this is what's uh, used in the secondary schools. And you'll see this woven through the curriculum um, in everyday language, we will constantly refer to this. So I wanted to talk to you about this because year sixes that are watching, do please learn these. This will stand you in really good stead for your start with us in September. Um, so we expect all of our boys to demonstrate excellence in everything they do. And that really means trying their best, um, putting everything that they've got uh, into a piece of work or into a task um, and just, you know, always trying your best, getting better all the time and demonstrating excellence. Um, I'm sure parents, I'm a parent myself, um, one of the, the skills that we instill into our children is manners. And you probably all use the phrase that I do, manners cost nothing. And that's something we uh, don't believe at school should ever go away. Um, it's something that should be constantly used. So uh, the children will always demonstrate good manners, but with that, so will the adults. We'll always model it for the children. Um, so we always expect pleases and thank yous. Um, and what that's led to is, is a group of incredibly polite, well-rounded young men um, that you know we have at Greenacre Academy. Um, we expect you to persevere. Now, um, I'm not going to sugarcoat. It's been tough on everyone these last few months. Um, we've all been in lockdown. I'm sure that as year sixes, you haven't developed academically as you would have um, had you been at school um, and exactly the same for children across the country. Please don't panic. We will close those gaps. We will catch you up. Um, that's what we're expert at doing. Um, but it will require you to persevere and stick with it and get back used to school life again. Um, we expect you to, to listen. Um, and when I say listen, I, I mean really listen. Um, I think we've all been sat there. Some of you may be sat there right now looking at the screen and not actually listening. Um, and actually we found that in school. We found that students can be sat there in mind and body, but they're really not with us. And it's a skill that's learned. Um, um, again, adults model it and we expect our boys to really listen um, and challenge questions, ask questions if they don't understand. Uh, being organised is such an important skill at secondary um, and year sixes, mum and dad may have got your bags ready for you and, and done everything for you at primary. Uh, we expect you to start standing on your own, own two feet a little bit more um, and by that I mean checking your timetable the day before, looking at what lessons you've got the next day, getting your bag ready, making sure your homework's done, if you've got PE, making sure you've packed your kit, um, and really being organised. Uh, the you in Employ Me is all about you making this count, your lessons, your future. Um, this is all about you, so if you follow these, um, it will only serve to help and support you. Um, in terms of motivation, really the end goal needs to be what secondary school is all about. And really that is the GCSE results at the end. Um, that's what you're coming to secondary school for. That's ultimately what you will leave with. And that needs to be the motivation that spurs you on in every lesson, that spurs you to attend every day um, and really give 100% um, to everything you do within school. Um, motivation. Uh, should be about going on to the next phase, the sixth form, um, going on and doing A-levels, uh, because the government have said that all children are to be in education or an apprenticeship until they're 18. So most of our students do tend to stay with us into sixth form. Um, we do offer a massive uh, wide variety of vocational courses as well as academic courses. So there's something for everyone. And we're, of course, linked with the girls' school there. Um, finally, employability. Work hard in school, demonstrate these skills, 
that's what we want is you to be employable at the end so that you stand apart from others um, so that our boys can go into interviews and maintain eye contact and present themselves properly and write a good business letter etc and they're all the soft skills that we're teaching alongside the academic um, so there are skills for life and I'm sure as parents you love those or else you probably wouldn't have chosen us. My opinion, I think this sets us apart from any other school because we're about getting our students ready uh, academically but also equipped with the soft skills to help them in the real world. So moving us on, um, I spoke briefly about the homeschool agreement earlier and I wanted to really touch on that and speak a little bit more about it. Um, so you'll find the homeschool agreement is in three stages and hopefully you can all see that slide now. Um, and really, what do we expect from our pupils? Um, well, to summarise that, we expect them to be on time, in school, every day, smart and equipped for school. Um, we expect them to be kind to others, um, you know, and, and demonstrate good manners and, and kindness to everyone that they encounter. We expect them to represent the school with pride because I'm incredibly proud of Greenacre, um, as are the staff there, as are the boys that attend. Um, so we expect that to go right the way through. Um, with that, we've looked at the homeschool agreement and what we expect um, from your sons. The next thing really is what should you expect from us? Um, so if we can move on to the next slide, hopefully you can see that there. Um, so. This is really what you can expect from us. We're, we're experts in delivering uh, lessons. We're experts in delivering lessons to boys and strategizing around how boys learn. Um, we won't have any child discriminated against. Um, and we expect, uh, you can expect from us, us to communicate with you at all times, um, whether it's good and, and bad at times, um, certainly rewards. Um, we do things like that, the head teachers award, the heads of year constantly give awards. We have um, house point systems. So, you know, all of that is, is really good for us to communicate with you. In addition, you will get information later on about the parent app and I would urge all parents, please download it. It will be um, an app that you put on your phone and what that will give you is lots and lots of information about how your son is doing in real time. So any data that's been uploaded, uh, their attendance, so you'll know if your son's left in plenty of time but actually he's arrived at school late, you'll know about that on the day. Um, if he's perhaps strolling around the corridors and arriving to lessons late, again, you can go in and have a look at that. So it's again a, a brilliant way for us to communicate um, and getting uh, very much uh, with technology um, trying to move us forward. So finally, um, what do we expect from our parents? And we should move on to the next slide. And again, it's all about supporting us. Um, we sometimes do have to make tough decisions and we may not always agree, um, but we'll do that privately and never in front of uh, the student because that never, ever helps communication. Um, so, you know, we give you our commitment to work with you. We would hope that you would give the same back to us and work with us. Um, we would ask, please don't book holidays through term time. Um, I appreciate um, many of us have lost holidays this year. Um, many of us, um, haven't been able to go away and many of us are probably thinking the prices of holidays are going to go through the roof next year. Um, I would please urge that doesn't give the right to go off and take holidays in term time. Secondary school is so important. Um, they've missed enough schooling. We really don't need any more missed. Um, so please, I um, very much urge you not to book holidays during term time. Um, and please communicate with us. If there are any problems whatsoever, tell us. Um, we will always work with you and always try to um, resolve any issues whatsoever. So just a, a few final things from me um, before I hand back to Mrs Campbell. Um, just wanted to let you know, as um, a, a school, there is a, currently a teacher shortage um, and we are fully staffed for September. And I felt that was important for you to know. Um, one of the other things that we do at Greenacre is we have a, a teaching school called Teaching Kent that uh, originated from Greenacre. And we've had this year over 80 uh, trainees. Next year, we've got over 100 trainees at various schools in Kent. 
what that enables um, Greenacre Academy and schools in our trust to do is constantly have um, new teachers coming through. Um, so that's a really good thing for us. Um, one of the other things we have operating from Greenacre is the Greenacre Sports Partnership. And many of you uh, students may have seen us into your primaries. Uh, you may have seen students from Greenacre coming in and operating from the Greenacre Leadership Academy. And again, um, that's something that we do in the community and it really strengthens uh, community engagement with us. Um, if uh, parents are interested, I'm sure you've looked already, um, our last Ofsted was in May 2018. Um, bearing in mind we've been out of school since March, it actually doesn't feel that long ago. Um, do take a read if you haven't read it. It does talk a lot um, about our Skills for Life vision um, and what we're doing moving forward. Um, in terms of our subjects, um, we're very, very strong in our core subjects, so English, Math, Science, the Humanities, which is Geography and History. Um, and then what we're really good at is those additional subjects, the PEs, the DTs, um, and our boys really excel at, at subjects like that. Um, we have many, many um, after school clubs, um, breakfast clubs, wake up clubs, lunchtime clubs. Um, how they will look in September, I don't yet know. The, at the moment, the main aim is to get all children back in September. Whether we can offer as many clubs then, I couldn't say. Um, but if we're not offering in September, as soon as things go back to normal, um, that will be part of everyday life. Um, to give you some ideas, the wake up club, um, they're running around in the mornings, uh, waking up and then having breakfast. Um, really, really popular club. We've got trampolining club, chess club, games club, debating club. Um, there are so, so many different types of club and I would urge you to, to get involved. We are very strong at sport um, and we win a lot. Um, I like that because I'm very competitive with the other heads of Medway. So I like it when we win things and our football teams and our rugby teams are incredibly successful. Um, so if you're into sport, you will absolutely love it at Greenacre. In addition to that, we've got a really strong performing arts and music department. So it may be that sport's not your thing, um, but you may like performing. And again, uh, some of the shows that we've put on are absolutely incredible. Um, so really, that's probably all for me to say right now. Um, I'll now hand back to uh, Mrs Campbell, who's going to talk to you a little bit about uniform and other expectations of the academy. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs Bridger. Um, OK, so I want to talk to you a little bit about uniform and basic equipment. And I know Mrs Bridger touched on this with the homeschool agreement. And um, you would have all seen the homeschool agreement. And the homeschool agreement is there for you just to outline responsibilities for us as a school. Mrs Bridger has already said this, I know. Um, responsibilities for your son and responsibilities that we would like for you so that we could all work together. And it really is a triangulated approach towards um, education and, and achieving the best outcomes for your son when he comes here. A huge part of that, um, and, and it's particularly in my area, is behaviour, um, rewards, attendance, um, punctuality and uniform. And probably if you have older children in the school and you ask them what my assemblies are about, they'll tell you always it's one of three things. It's either about behaviour, it's about attendance and punctuality or it's about uniform. And the reason that it's usually about those things is because actually when you look at uniform and if you can see the, the slide in front of you and, and our wonderful year 10 student there that is modelling our uniform. Um, uniform is so important because when our students dress appropriately for school, when they look smart, it really does set them up for the right day. So if they're looking smart, they're thinking smart and if they're thinking smart they can really make leaps and bounds in their progress because they have the right attitude to learning um, and that's really what this is about it's about getting those really small things right because actually their day will go well if they start to do those things wrong um, actually their day won't go as well because they won't feel that they are ready for that structured day so if we take our year 10 in the picture here um, and he, he's actually coming in full school uniform um, during our shutdown so he we took this picture of him the other day and um, as you can see he really enjoyed it um, this was maybe the fourth one we took um, he's wearing his black school trousers um, he's wearing his smart, hard-soled black shoes. Um, we do not encourage trainers and we don't encourage trainers 
um, because actually when the students go into DT, they need hard wearing shoes because of the types of equipment they could be using um, and because of the way that they're moving around on, on the DT floors. So we really don't encourage trainers at all. Um, obviously, if your son wants to bring trainers into school uh, in his bag, ready to uh, change into at break and lunchtime, that is completely fine. And we would encourage that because I have a son and I know how quickly they can go through school shoes if they're playing with a football at break and lunchtime. So, um, Please, we would encourage them to bring trainers in their bag, but not on their feet when they come into school. Um, our student here is wearing his Greenacre school tie. So it is a black tie with green stripes on. And you can buy one of those from our main reception here at school. And I'm going to go through our uniform sales dates with you in just a moment um, as to when you can come and collect one of those. A white shirt, um, which are not emblazoned, so you can get those from anywhere. A blazer with the Greenacre logo. Now there are two versions of this blazer. You could either get the blazer with the Greenacre logo on, um, embroidered onto it, and they're available from Uniform Base and School Time. Um, and again, I'll just, just give you a little bit more information about those two places in just a moment. Alternatively, you could get the iron-on badge, and that will be available from our main reception again when our uniform sales dates um, are open. So that is um, school uniform and I'm going to come back in a moment to school uniform because I've actually given you a zoomed in zoomed in image there, sorry, uh, uh, on some badges and I'm going to talk you through our reward system really briefly in a second and why that student's wearing those badges. But I'll just finish off uniform by talking about PE kit. Um, now, school has been a very difficult um, uh, environment for the last few months. Um, some of your children may have been back in school and some of them may not. Um, there has been a lot of conversation about uniform and, and PE lessons. We are hoping to have as much of a normal, normal timetable as we possibly can come September, which will include your son taking part in PE lessons. So it is really crucial that they have the correct PE kit. So that is the black Greenacre shorts, um, a white Greenacre polo top, and we would encourage you to buy the rugby top. Now, it isn't compulsory, um, but PE lessons do go on into the winter. And although they may not be in a position where they can play rugby due to the nature of it being a contact sport, um, it does get cold outside. So they may want to wear it just for warmth. Um, in addition, they will do cross country and it does get very muddy out on the field. So they may want to wear that for cross country. Um, number one, because it will keep them warm. And number two, because black is far easier to get the mud out of on the rugby top than it is on the white T-shirt. So we don't want you to have to replace lots and lots of uniform very early on into your son's school career. Um, so that's our PE kit. If I just go back to the badges on our um, student uniform here, you'll notice that they've got a star and then two um, coloured badges. The star and the first coloured badge is actually a recognition of 100% attendance for that student. So for two years in a row, um, this student has had at least, well, at least has had 100% attendance. Um, so we really like to reward our students for the things that they do well. Having 100% attendance is really difficult and we do appreciate that. There are times that students do become unwell, but actually if we aim for 100%, um, it's very impressive and we do like to recognise that. We do have a very robust behaviour and sanction system here at school, but we do like to even that up with a really strong rewards um, system as well. And Miss Murphy, the head of Year 7, is actually also in charge of that reward system. The third badge there is actually a table tennis badge. And this student has been involved in table tennis club and taken part in table tennis tournaments, not just with other local Medway schools, but actually across um, the Medway Towns for the last three years. So he has been recognised for his commitment to table tennis by receiving that badge. So these are fantastic accolades to collect um, and we really hope that your son will take that on board because actually our students wear these badges with pride. So we're hoping to see lots more of those as your son moves from year seven all the way through to year 11. So that's our reward system and you may have seen on Facebook if you're following us or Twitter that we've done lots of doorstop rewards. Um, during this shutdown period, we're still recognising um, our online learning work. We would normally at this point in the year perhaps take students to the cinema. We've gone to the ice skating rink in the past. We've been bowling. We take them to Chessington. We've tried to do lots of rewards in the past. Obviously, this is really unusual times for us. We've not been able to do those things, but we've tried to reward in our own small way. Um, the students love rewards whilst we've been in this shutdown. Um, moving on to equipment then. Um, what we would encourage, and um, I'm going to strongly encourage this with you, and I'll explain that in a moment, is for students to bring in a black pen, um, a pencil, a red pen, a ruler, a rubber, and they will be provided with their planner. 
Um, and ideally, you'll buy a pencil case for students for your son to bring in September. Under normal circumstances, um, if a student forgets a pen, it's fine and we would normally lend them. Unfortunately, due to the COVID crisis, we're in a situation where we cannot lend equipment. So going into September, um, we will be encouraging all students across the school to have multiple pieces of equipment on them every single day. So ideally across the six weeks holidays, going into um, a local retailer and buying a pencil case, filling it with four or five black pens, a couple of pencils, a couple of red pens, you know, multiple numbers of um, rubbers and a ruler. Um, I think that is going to set your son up for his entire school day. And then having a bank of those resources at home, so a, a box of pens that he can then top up as the day goes on. Students do lose pens, they do run out, they do get broken. Um, so it'd be really good if you have that preparation. We were talking about organisation earlier so that your son can become organised, ready for school the following day. Um, we do have a bank of equipment at school. In order for your son to get that bank of equipment, he will have to purchase it. We sell pens and pencils and rulers and rubbers for 10 pence each. We will have a bank each day. So if your son wants to also bring in 20 to 30 pence a day, just in his pocket, should he need to um, purchase a pen or a pencil. But unfortunately, we cannot lend from September moving forward. The other thing that we've added for this year is a small bottle of hand sanitizer. And um, we do have lots of sanita sanitization points, apologies for that, um, throughout the school. And they are topped up on a regular basis, but it might actually be useful for your son to carry his own small bottle around with him and that way he's, he has access to it at all times. Lastly, there are two further things that we would encourage you to um, uh, buy for your son. That is a large school bag, um, number one for putting PE kit in, and number two, potentially for carrying books around in. So we will provide your son with a planner. We have sent you a, a preferred reading list or a recommended reading list in your transition pack. If your son is reading any of those books, if you've managed to um, purchase any of those books, or if you've managed to borrow some from a lending library during this situation, it would be really useful if he brings that into school so he can continue reading that during the school day. Um, we do have a library and it is kept fully stocked, but it doesn't always mean that we have something your son will want to read. So if there is something from home that he wants to bring in his school bag, because we do have uh, moments throughout the day where we do expect students to read silently. So we do encourage you to bring a suitable size bag with a pencil case full of equipment in, with a reading book in it and a small bottle of hand sanitizer. In terms of face masks, um, they're not compulsory at present. If your son would like to wear one, that is entirely at his own choice and your choice too. And that is fine with us. Um, what I'm going to move on to now is some of the uniform sales dates. So bear with me one moment while I change my screen. There we go. So we've selected four dates across the summer holidays for us to sell uniform. Um, Tuesday the 11th of August, Wednesday the 12th of August, Wednesday the 26th of August and Thursday the 27th of August. And um, we are running those sessions from 10 until 12 on each of those days. And um, we are going to publish for you a um, equipment and uniform list if you would like to come and purchase those with the prices. We can take cash for that. So if you are um, using cash when you um, come up to school here, um, if you could have the correct cash, that would be really helpful. Don't worry too much if you haven't, we will have a small float, um, but we will get those letters out to you with the uniform list. If you are going to uniform base or school time before August the 10th, for new starters for year six going into year seven, they are offering a 10% discount on their uniform items. So if you are looking to buy uniform, it may be worth taking um, advantage of that 10% extra discount that, that both of those stores have on for uh, purchasing uniform. Um, if you, I'm going to pass over to Miss Murphy because she's going to go through some questions and there are probably lots of other questions that you may not think of now, you may need to ask later. And I know Mrs Bridges is going to talk about ways that you can contact us. But these dates will also be available on our website and I'll make sure that they go on our Facebook and our Twitter page so that you can keep constantly reminded of the dates that we're going to be open for uniform. All of that is going to be available from the main reception. So just coming into the front of the school off of Waterslade Road and into our main reception. I'm going to pass you over now to Miss Murphy, who's going to go through um, the questions that you posed during this presentation. Thank you very much. Good evening, welcome to our virtual transition evening. Um, I'm Miss Murphy, I'm Head of Year 7 here at Greenacre. 
Whilst you've been addressed by our head teacher, Mrs. Bridger, and our deputy head, Mrs. Campbell, I've been looking through some of the questions that have been coming in on the Q&A and emailed to our transition email address. So I've picked out a few that I'm going to go through. Like you said, if there's something that we haven't covered, please feel free to email our GA transition email address and we will get someone to come back to you. So first up, um, some of the things that people have been asking about is what transition materials are available. If you head over to our trust website, we have a whole section on transition. So you'll be able to access the school tour video. Um, so we go around the whole school looking at all the areas. There's a transition booklet. There's also some more uniform information. There's general school information. The reading list is on there and also access to MathsWiz if your son wishes to access that over the summer holidays. Um, some parents have been asking what's going to happen on Wednesday the 2nd of September. So on Wednesday the 2nd of September, we will only have the Year 7 students in school. Um, they'll be able to meet their form tutors, have a little look around, but at the moment we are just trying to follow government guidelines, so we will update you more as we know more, but they will definitely be in on Wednesday the 2nd and they'll have the school to themselves, so don't panic, it won't be overcrowded. Next thing that I want to talk about is bullying. We've had lots of questions, people saying they're worried about bullying, their son's worried about bullying. And this is a question that comes up every single year and it's going to come up every year after this. But if any school tells you they don't have bullying at their establishment, I would say they're not being truthful with you. When you have large groups of young people all together, it is highly likely that there will be some issues. We're not going to deny that, but it's how it's dealt with that's important. So at Greenacre, we do not tolerate bullying and we do look at holding restoratives where possible and educating students on why certain behaviours aren't acceptable. But we also have a red button on our trust website where parents and students can report any incidents and this is monitored really closely by our pastoral team and the leadership group. But my key advice to you is talk to us. We can't deal with any incidents that we are not aware with. So I just want to express how important that is and we will do anything we can to support you as long as we are aware of it. I just want to touch on equipment again. I know Ms Campbell's just spoken about this, but it is really important that your son has his own equipment in September as we cannot share this with you. So there will be opportunities for them to purchase it at school. But obviously, it's easier if they just are here on the first day with everything that they need. I've had some questions about lunch times and people worrying about giving their children money to come to school with. What if they lose it? Don't worry, we won't let them starve, we'll definitely feed them, but our canteen is actually cashless, so parents can top up on parent pay online and that can be accessed through our school website. So there's a little bit more on our GA transition section about that if you need more information. We've had some questions um, about financial hardship and if this is something that you as a family are worrying about, we'll support you as much as we can. And if this is an issue, then if you just make us aware by the GA transition email, um, that obviously only comes through to myself and one other member of the pastoral team. So we'll pick that up and we can have a conversation with you about that. There's been some questions about who's the best person to contact, just general questions, worries, queries. I would say your form tutor, they're your main point of contact. Of course, you can always contact me, but I'm overseeing you, your whole year group, so 180 of you. So your form tutors will be responsible just for a small group of you. So go to them first. You're more than welcome to email me. And we also have pastoral support assistants who can deal, also deal with any of your concerns. Um, some people have asked, is it OK to email subject teachers directly about academic progress? I would say yes, 100%, of course it is, please do. We'd love you parents and carers to keep in the loop about your son's academic progress, so please do. All of their websites you will find, all of their emails, sorry, you will find on the school website. Um, there have been a lot more questions. I haven't got time to go through all of them tonight, but if you do have a specific question directly about your son's needs or you wish to speak to our Senko, then if you just email us at gatransition at sflt.org.uk, we'll address those questions with a bespoke answer that will be right for you. I'm really, really looking forward to meeting you all in September. Um, I hope you have a wonderful summer. I'm going to be passing back over to our head teacher, Ms Bridger, and I'll see you all in September. Bye. OK, thanks very much, Miss Murphy. Um, 
I hope that um, I, I can see that some of the questions have been answered, but there are a fair few questions on there. Um, some I may be able to just answer for you now. Um, in terms of how the school will look in September, obviously the DfE guidance um, only came out a short time ago. Um, and we have been uh, very, very busy putting plans together. Um, we are aiming for the whole school being back with staggered starts, bubbles um, of students. Um, under our Skills for Life Trust um, motto, above that at the moment is safety first. Um, so I want to reassure parents um, safety is at the forefront of any decisions that we make. Um, currently, we're looking at uh, the DfE guidance, which has said, you know, forward facing, uh, teach has to be two metres apart, etc., um, and less movement. So that's going to make secondary school look a little bit different, where normally students would travel to their lessons. Um, as soon as we have firmer um, information, we will be sending it out to you. Um, so I just wanted to, to give you some idea there. Um, I will be writing again to parents at the end of this week. Um, um, and a, a good thing for you to look at is if you um, go onto our website, um, and I believe that's up on screen now, um, it's under sflt.org.uk. If you then go into Greenacre, on our front page, um, the letters that we've been sending, and we've been sending two out a week, um, have been, it will give you a flavour of what information we've been giving um, our parents so far. Um, and further information is about to come out uh, about how September will look. Um, so that's the plan at the moment. We are planning to get the whole school back, providing, of course, it is safe to do so. Um, we are planning a, a backup plan and another backup plan behind that. Um, but at the moment, the aim is um, to get all students back. Um, another question I saw was, do you do drama GCSE? We do performing arts GCSE, um, but that's current. Don't forget year six is by the time you get to year 11 um, or year 10 when you're choosing, um, we may well offer that then, but at the moment it is performing arts. Um, in terms of your arrival first day, you come in through the front main gates. Um, I can't answer all of them because there are too many there. Um, so I said to you, you know, keep an eye on our website, have a look at the letters that we're sending out. Um, also, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the addresses are there. That gives you a real flavour um, of everyday academy life and even a flavour um, during lockdown. Um, our newsletter is due to come out on Friday, so do take a read of that. That will be published on our website. Um, you know, my advice for year six is um, please, please, please keep reading. Um, please read over the summer and also practice those times tables. If you know them off by heart, and I'm sure you've some of you have got a little bit rusty, um, please carry on reading because literacy is at the base of all lessons. If you can read well, you can interpret anything. Um, so please continue to read. Um, I think that's it from me. Um, so all that remains for me to say is um, I cannot wait to see you all in September. Um, I have missed the boys so much during this time and I cannot wait for our whole school community to be back together. Um, I cannot wait to meet you all. I look forward to again meeting parents um, at the first event where we can have parents in. Um, and it only remains for me to say um, stay safe. Have a wonderful summer um, and take care of each other and we can't wait to see you. Thanks very much and good night.